The Broken Blueprint, Part 3, Finding Hill Beautiful. Search for a new school site. Even though, by the turn of the century, the Battle Creek Sanitarium was a leading treatment center, the special work God had for our people in medical missionary work was not being done. In 1903, Ellen White wrote, Medical missionary work is yet in its infancy. The meaning of genuine medical missionary work is known by but few. Special Testimonies, Series B, Number 8, page 28. In this study, we will learn the blueprint for a medical missionary training center. Although, as a result of Ellen White's urging, both the Paradise Valley and Glendale properties had been purchased for use as sanitariums, neither provided exactly what the Lord wanted. Three years before locating those properties, she described a certain property in Southern California which she had been shown at night in vision. I have been unable to sleep after half past eleven at night. Many things in figures and symbols are passing before me. There are sanitariums in running order near Los Angeles. At one place there is an occupied building and there are fruit trees on the sanitarium grounds. In this institution, outside the city, there is much activity. EGW, Manuscript 152, 1901 The view was so real, she said she felt as if she was there, viewing the patients outside. Some were sitting beneath the shade trees, while others were working in the garden. Some of the shade trees formed tents like canopies. Neither the Paradise nor Glendale sites fitted this description. John Allen Burden, 1862-1942, was one of our first sanitarium administrators. When he was nine years old, John already showed a deep interest in the spirit of prophecy writings. In 1882, he entered Healdsburg College. Nine years later, in 1891, he became manager of the St. Helena Sanitarium. From about 1901 to 1904, he helped develop sanitarium work in Australia. In 1900, soon after her return from Australia, Ellen White made her home, which she called Lems Haven, in Pratt Valley just below the St. Helena Sanitarium, established in 1878. Urging that medical institutions be established in Southern California, she was guided to select John Burden to undertake the task of locating suitable sites. In 1904, he began the search. Ellen White said God had shown her that he would find good properties available at very low prices. While surveying the coastal areas and valleys, he found many tourist hotels and health resort buildings for sale. These had earlier gone bankrupt during a real estate boom and bust. Two of these were purchased privately on her advice. The Paradise Valley Sanitarium, 1904, in National City, and the Glendale Sanitarium, 1905. Further inland, near San Bernardino, was a Victorian-styled complex called the Loma Linda Resort Hotel. When the original owner went into bankruptcy in the 1890s, the property and its extensive acreage was purchased by a group of Los Angeles businessmen and physicians who wanted to develop it as a health resort. Renaming it Loma Linda, which means Hill Beautiful, they remodeled and richly furnished the hotel added five patient cottages and a recreation hall, and then extensively landscaped the hill behind the facility. By this time, they had $150,000 invested in the property. But by 1904, with few patrons and desperate for a way out, the group put it up for sale. In early 1905, Ellen White journeyed south. When she arrived at the San Bernardino Valley, she was impressed to instruct elder burden to look for a property in that area which could be used for a country sanitarium. Shortly afterward, burden found Loma Linda. The hotel, ancillary buildings, and 76 acres were for sale for $110,000. The sellers wanted to rid themselves of this white elephant, yet were hoping the buyer would make it succeeded as a medical facility. So they told burden he could have it for $40,000 later discounted to $38,900. Ellen White told John to accept it. 
The option was signed on May 26, 1905 with a down payment of $1,000. Also included in the sale were shares of stocks in two water companies. These were important since water is scarce in that area. Ellen White visits Loma Linda. While he was living in Loma Linda a number of years ago and researching its history, David Lee was entrusted by Dr. and Mrs. L. H. Lonegan with a manuscript entitled Story of Loma Linda, written by John Burden, our pioneer organizer and manager at Loma Linda. The document is also to be found in Document File 8A at the Ellen G. White Estate. Here is the first of several excerpts from that manuscript. It describes Ellen White's first visit to the place, which occurred on June 12, 1905. After the return from Washington of the absent members of the Southern California Conference Committee, a meeting was called and we were asked what had been done about Loma Linda property. We explained that we had secured $1,000 for the first payment and had signed the contract for the purchase of Loma Linda at $40,000. Naturally, some of the committee felt that in view of their telegram against securing Loma Linda, in view of the advice of the Pacific Union Conference against undertaking further enterprises because of the overwhelming financial obligations, we had acted unadvisedly. It was suggested that they must officially repudiate all responsibility for what had been done. The feeling of tension was lessened, however, as soon as it was learned that the conference had not been involved financially in the purchase of the property. We urged them, however, before taking final action, to attend a council meeting at Loma Linda with Mrs. White, who was due to arrive from Washington the following morning and this after some hesitation they consented to do. Besides members of the conference committee, about 25 other members of the Los Angeles church were invited to attend the council. Ellen White arrived and the meeting was held on June 12, 1905. E.G. White Biography, Volume 6, page 17. The next morning, about 10 o'clock, the train from Los Angeles stopped at the Loma Linda station in front of the sanitarium. The large committee were inspecting the grounds and the building when Sister White and her company drove up in an express wagon. Their train from the east had stopped at Redlands Junction as the Overlands train did not stop at Loma Linda. As Sister White stepped from the express wagon to the ground, she said to her son who was with her, Willie, I have been here before. He said, No, mother, you have never been here. Then this is the very place the Lord has shown me, for it is all familiar. Addressing another who stood by, she said to the effect, We must have this place. We should reason from cause to effect. The Lord has not given us this property for any common purpose. As she walked about the grounds and the buildings at Loma Linda, she frequently remarked, this is the very place the Lord has shown me. We entered what was then known as the assembly building at the top of the hill. Here in one room was a billiard table, in another a bowling alley, and in the third room a card table with cards scattered all over the floor. As Mrs. White entered the room, she looked and said, This building will be of great value to us. A school will be established here. Redlands will become a center as also will Loma Linda. Battle Creek is going down. God will establish his medical work at this place. John A. Burden, Story of Loma Linda At that time, the denomination still owned the Battle Creek Medical Facilities, but knowing in advance that it would be lost to us, Ellen had been shown that Loma Linda would take its place. But, as she said, God's plan was that it would go beyond that which the Battle Creek Sanitarium and Training Center was accomplishing. In this present book, we will learn what the plan was. Much of the remainder of the complete burden manuscript, Story of Loma Linda, deals with the many hardships, sacrifices, and providences in the development of the Loma Linda property over the next few years. Single-handedly, Ellen White urged the believers in Southern California to recognize the importance of this project. 
Our people in Southern California need to awake to the magnitude of the work to be done within their own borders. Let them awake to prayer and labor. I have a message to bear to the church members in Southern California. Arouse and avail yourselves of the opportunities open to you. Special Testimonies, Series B, Number 3, Pages 30 to 31. On June 20, eight days after her arrival, the Southern California Conference accepted the property as a denominational institution. After Elder Burden gave a description of the property to the assembled delegates, Ellen White spoke, followed by the conference president. In an official report of this meeting, it is recorded. He then stated that Sister White had said that this sanitarium should be the principal training school on this coast. At this point, Sister White interrupted him and said, This will be. Minutes of Southern California Conference, June 20, 1905. When God says to do something, it can be done. It can be done, that is, if we will believe and obey. A small conference of only 1,400 believers was able to pay 20000 before the end of that year and the balance within another three years. The Council of the Spirit of Prophecy had been confirmed. As we moved forward in faith, the Lord opened the way before us and the money came from unexpected sources. Nearly all were at last convinced that truly God was carrying forward the enterprise. Burden Story of Loma Linda Well aware of the possibilities, if the blueprint was followed, she wrote that year. It is difficult to comprehend all that this transaction means to us. Letter 291, 1905 By April 15, 1906, the entire purchase price had been paid and a dedication service was held on the sanitarium grounds. We should appreciate Loma Linda as a place which the Lord foresaw we should need and which he gave us. Medical Ministry, page 56. I desire that all the work of this place shall be a correct representation of what our health institutions should be. EGW, April 20, 1911. It is well to pause here and consider John A. Burden. As you will learn in the coming pages, it was he who shouldered the full responsibility for fulfilling the Spirit of Prophecy blueprint for Loma Linda until he was stopped. He was calm, quiet, naturally cautious, but emboldened to audacity by his faith in the Word of God. Behind a non-committal coolness of manner blazed an ardent and heart-warming fervor of loyalty and trustworthiness and a single-minded purpose to bless his fellow men. Mrs. White knew him well and valued him highly. To him went her main counsel and support in this matter, and through him she saw the providences of God unfolding step by step. A. W. Spalding, Christ's Last Legion, page 152. What should be the objective? In the beginning, John Burden was the chairman of the board, the president of the corporation, the manager of the sanitarium, as well as its chaplain. How should he start? What principles should he adopt? Fortunately, Elder Burden had an earlier experience in following Spirit of Prophecy principles. He also had close cooperation from Ellen White. She intended to make this a truly blueprint medical missionary training center in the full sense of the term. At the time of her first visit to the Loma Linda property, Ellen White said something which clearly revealed the objective. While in the amusement hall of the Loma Linda property, she remarked, God will re-establish his medical work at this place. We are further from the true picture of medical missionary work than when we first began. He never designed that our work should blossom out in the professional and commercial way in which it stands before the world today at the Battle Creek Sanitarium. We have educated bedside nurses when we should have educated missionary nurses to go into the homes of the people and the villages, towns and cities, ministering to the people, singing gospel songs and giving Bible readings. 
those who do this work will reap a rich harvest of souls, both from the higher and lower walks of life. J. A. Burden, Story of Loma Linda Not bedside nurses, but missionary nurses. A radically different type of nurse and physician training program was envisaged. The plan was not to train medical personnel merely to staff hospitals, but to labor in the communities of America and throughout the world, ministering to the needs of the people, giving them Bible studies, and bringing the final message into their lives. School begins. During that summer, the first nursing students, most of them young people, arrived and some on-the-job instruction was given. The sanitarium opened to patients on October 9, 1905, and that winter, as many as 55 patients were cured for at one time. In November, Julia A. White, MD, no relation, recruited by Ellen White, arrived to be the sanitarium's obstetrician and head of the training program for nurses. Formal instruction began early in January 1906. Shortly afterward, the conference elected Warren E. Howell, 1869-1943, to be the first president of this new school in Loma Linda, 1906-1907. He had earlier taught at Hellsburg and Emmanuel Missionary College, then became president of Hellsburg, 1904-1906. Like Burden, Howell was solidly for the blueprint. This new school in Loma Linda was given the name Loma Linda College of Evangelists. His task was to gather a faculty and help Elder Burden organize a nursing, general collegiate, and evangelistic medical curricula. The next year, 1907, Howell was sent to fill a mission appointment in Greece. It seemed strange that the general conference would suddenly decide to send him to the Mediterranean. Howell knew nothing about the area or the language when this important work at Loma Linda was barely beginning. But this pattern would continue. George Knapp Abbott, MD, took his place as head of the school, 1907 to 1909. As you may know, this was the same Abbott, another solid pioneer worker who wrote an outstanding little book on hydrotherapy, technique of hydrotherapy, and was co-author of the later Physical Therapy in Nursing Care which was one of the six books the present author used in the preparation of his water therapy manual. Both of these books are now out of print. The manual is an excellent hydrotherapy instruction book, available from the publisher of the book you now have in hand. It is one of the most complete books on the subject available today. This is fortunate since there are not many thorough books on the subject available today. The complete book is also included in the third edition of the present author's 424-page Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. We could, with profit, drop much of the dispensary work that is done. Given the common treatments, hydrotherapy, etc., to the sick, will accomplish more. Ellen G. White to A. G. Daniels, 1903, Unpublished Testimonies, page 317. Only nine years of prior schooling were required in order to enroll in the nursing program. After taking a basic two years instruction in nursing, the students were then eligible to enroll in the evangelistic medical course. On December 9, 1909, under a second new name, the College of Medical Evangelists, CME, the institution received from the state of California a charter authorizing the granting of academic and professional degrees. Unfortunately, in the second decade of the 20th century, the new medical college began to veer away toward the professionalism, practices, and treatments given by non-Adventist medical schools. Rather early, pressure was already being heavily exerted to move Loma Linda away from the blueprint. Fortunately, we have a letter which provides a glimpse of the divergent views. It will provide us with a broad introduction to the entire situation back then. Not everyone was in agreement with the blueprint. In fact, there were four views regarding what should be done with the fledgling institution. In order to better understand this, 
we will skip forward three years to 1908 to a letter written to a high-ranking church leader. After that, we will next overview a large number of objectives and principles of Blueprint Medical Missionary Training Centers and then return to the Loma Linda story to see how Ellen White's plan progressed.